Welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Metro Councilman at Large Jerry Maynard, and Heard Daily on 1510 WLAC. Syndicated talk show host Steve Gill, welcome. Congratulations on your victory this Thank week. You. Thank you so nice much. Nice re-election. Appreciate it. Let's talk about the Metro election. No big surprise, Mayor Dean wins in a big landslide, and yet at the same time, the fairgrounds wins in a big landslide too. So there was not a referendum against the mayor, despite the fact that he wanted to do away with the fairgrounds and, and have something else developed there. Well, you didn't have any serious competition. I think that when you look at the, the numbers that the, that the fair got, it might have been a time that a, a decent opponent mm -hmm. might have been able to do something. I think he still would have won. Uh, but I think also when you look at the Metro Council, and Jerry can certainly talk more to this, it was pretty much a stand pat status quo result. Pretty much everybody got back in. You know, the fairgrounds will be status quo and the mayor will be status quo. So it really wasn't a big change election. Seemed like the voters were saying we like the mayor, we also like the fairgrounds. That's, exactly right. That's why it was not a referendum because you voted for the mayor and for the fairgrounds. Sandra Moore won in the land slide, although Anna Page lost, Sandra Moore won, and she was the big proponent of redeveloping it. So I think that you over overreaching if you think that the vote for the fairgrounds somehow was a referendum on the mayor. And so I think people like the direction that the city's going, and that's why the five at large won, that's why the vice mayor won, that's why the mayor won. A lot of people say the reason why he didn't have a big opponent is because people are very happy mm -hmm. with the way we're going here in Nashville. Let's talk a little bit about the fairgrounds. One more point. The council is doing a long-range study on the feasibility of something else for the fairgrounds down the road. Despite that, the mayor last night said, or this week said, after his election, he has no further plans for doing anything. He's status quo with it. Do you foresee any possibility of something else happening anytime soon or any kind of recommendation or will the fairground just continue as is for now? No, we passed legislation asking the fair board to create a master plan. Mm -hmm. So when we get back into session in October, we are expecting for the fair board to do their due dil diligence in the study and co create a master plan by which we will then vote on. Whether the mayor wants to take leadership on that, I'm not going to speak for him. As a Metro Councilman at large though, we're going to insist that the fair board create that master plan for us so we can discuss the future, whether it includes racing or not, whether includes a, fair, a flea markets or mm -hmm. not, we have to have a, a master plan to move us forward for the next 5, 10, and 20 years. And now the supporters of the fairground have won. I guess it's up to those supporters to make sure people show up for the state fair, for the racing, and for the flea market. And they've done fairly well in most of those. I, I think the other thing that, that comes out of this election is that something ought to be done better out there than what we're doing. <coughs> but by the same token, the mayor ought to offer a specific plan. This, I got a secret plan. Trust me on this. Clearly, that was rejected by the voters. I think you will see something different done at the fairgrounds if there's a specific plan that can generate support in the community and with the council. That wasn't done last time, and I think any future plan is going to have to be very specific, very detailed, very open, very transparent, very honest. As Steve said, pretty much status quo as far as the Metro Council and the mayor is concerned. Obviously, the mayor wins big against kind of token opposition. You and the other four Metro Council members at large all reelected, and yet only 17 incumbents are returning to the council because of term limits and the like. You're going to have a lot of new faces. Do you expect a new direction from the council because of that? No, I don't, because I supported many of the candidates that won, and you had the mayor supporting some candidates who lost, but he also supported a lot of candidates who did win. We had Jim Hodge, who is an incumbent, he lost, and Anna Page, unfortunately, lost. So we have those two coming in, replacing incumbents. The question becomes, what's the agenda that the mayor has for the city, and what's the agenda that the Metro Council will deliver, uh, de develop themselves? For example, I want a new baseball stadium, and so we're going to be taking the lead from the council. That's on my mm -hmm. agenda for the next term. I'm sure the mayor has an agenda, and it really depends on whether these council persons are going to come in with an agenda or whether they're going to say, okay, Mayor, you lead us, you tell us what you want, and we'll decide whether we want to follow or, in some cases, say we reject it. And have a lot of new voices. I guess we wait to hear what they have to say. Well, I think always the danger when you have a mayor that goes after specific council members and they win, they are not beholden to him at all. He went after <laughs> some specific true. council members very aggressively. They won. They have nothing to gain from being his buddy, so he's going to have some very contentious, I think, council members. And with every right to be so, he went after them. They won, in many cases, by a pretty good margin. They've got every right to come back at him. But one, one specific one he went after, though, they agree 95% of the time. Now, so you can't argue with that record. So the person that I'm talking about agreed with the mayor 95% of the time. I think we can find common ground to move the city forward. Metro wants a waiver from the No Child Left Behind guidelines. In fact, the state, Governor, Governor Haslam, has said he's going to seek a waiver for the entire state. Good idea, bad idea. Is this an outdated attempt at, at determining how schools are, are working and achieving? It's, it, let me say, as a lawyer, it's, it's good and bad. Here's why. You need to have standardized t testing to assess where the students are. But you shouldn't have the punishment that comes with it when you say, hey, listen, we're going to all of a sudden threaten to take over the schools. We're going to have these penalties against you if you don't meet these standards. It should be assessment and then what, what should be the plan, what should be the game plan in order to get your student performance up to the level that you want it to be. It should not be punitive. In 
nature. I think that's what you got to get rid of, that part, the punitive part, because we have too many students who English is not their first language, mm -hmm. and it's bringing down our test scores overall. We should not be punished because of that, because we have an, a population that's not reflective throughout the state. Or without some kind of test that we don't know where schools are achieving or not achieving. Yeah, you've got a grade, and it's certainly punitive for students. When they take a test, they get an F, they get held back. So there is a punitive nature to any measurement of whether you're progressing or not. I would agree with Jerry that a big part of the problem here and in Memphis is that you have a lot of students who do not speak English. Right. But I think that underscores that rather than throwing them into classes where they don't understand what's going on, don't have a clue what's happening in math and English and science or anything else, Teach English only. Do this absolute focus on English to get them caught up and then start teaching them everything else. Right now, we're throwing these kids into muddled situations where not only can they not do the test, they can't perform the classwork either, and, and it's taking too long to get them up to speed in the English language. Focus on English in those situations, then the test scores will be do better. If do the better. waiver happens, can school systems in Tennessee improve with just, say, TCAP tests without some other outside testing measure happening? You know what? I don't know the answer to that, Bob, because we did see an improvement in math scores and reading scores for Davidson County Schools. The problem is it used to be at 40 percent, and Steve will talk about this, it used to be at 40 percent, now they raise it to 60. 60. So we didn't meet the new standard at the 60 percent. That's why we're considered failing now. But we have seen improvements. I think we will improve whether we have the penalties in place or not, whether we have no child left behind or not, because the mayor's committed to it, the council's committed to it, and if the school board doesn't do their job, we need a new school board. Jerry's touched on the exact problem. The standard that we are failing to meet in most of our schools, both here again and in Memphis, is 40% proficiency in, in math, 49% proficiency in, in reading. Mm. We're not even expecting half the students to be able to read and do math, and we don't want to have it tested because it reveals how badly we're doing. We are failing our students and our community miserably, and the testing that reveals it is not as big a problem as the failure to teach those students. And I want to respond to that because standardized testing may not be the most effective way to determine whether a student is proficient. Many times from a cultural perspective, standardized testing really have not done well with minorities, mm -hmm. especially people where English is the second language and not the first language. So we may need to find out and find another tool by which to measure the proficiency of student learning and their progression. In some counties in, in, in the state of Tennessee, they say we're going to move away from letter grades and we're going to look at just assessment and progression. Here's where you started off at this level. We're going to measure where you are at the end of the year and come up with a plan for the next academic year. So maybe the standardized test is not the best way to measure proficiency. If we're going to have standard math, same numbers apply right. to everybody, the same language applies to everybody, having a standard test makes sense. We may not like the results, but the results are honest and truthful. National debt ceiling debate finally comes to a conclusion. No one really likes the deal, but it averted the crisis. Who is the winner here if there is a winner? We looked at the Tea Party folks. They kind of held their ground. Democrats not real happy with what came out of it, and yet the crisis, as we said, is averted at least through the next election. Look, just a few weeks ago, the real issue for a lot of folks was whether or not there were going to be tax increases right. in this deal. Uh, the fact that there are no tax increases, uh, and in fact it's going to be even harder to do tax increases as we move ahead, makes, I think, the Tea Party the big winner. They've changed the dynamic in Washington. One of the senators, I think, said correctly, the way this deal would have been done just a few years ago, they would have thrown 20 or $30 billion dollars in pork to the folks who they needed to buy their votes, it would have been done. The fact that we're not doing that says we've made progress. No one won because the economy definitely is not re re responding well to it. You see that we have a crash right now in our market, and crash on the Dow Jones. We see that the politicians are not happy because all of them walked away with getting really not something that they really wanted. And so I believe the American people have lost in this. I think they lost, if you look at the polls, the lowest the lowest approval rating for Congress ever in the history of the polls when they've been taken. 84% disapproval of what Congress is doing. 46% disapproval of what Obama is doing. I think we all lose with the debt ceiling debate. I think it was manufactured by the Tea Party. I think they're leading this country in the wrong direction. And I hope that B Boehner and I hope that, <laughs> that uh, Mitch McConnell will say to the Tea Party, why don't you get in the back of the bus, learn first, learn how the system works, well, then we'll bring you to the front of the bus after you've been seasoned and you understand compromise. I think Bill, Jerry, Manor, we've seen the front that. of the bus people <laughs> destroy <laughs> Things. Let's not let uh, them keep running. This week continues in a moment. <laughs>